I've got a question. Does pan made clothes equal poorly made and low quality? Mm. I feel like I'm about to tell myself off in this video. So I'm just going to put out this trigger warning. I hope you don't find this video triggering. If you do find it triggering, then actually I might even feel triggered by this video. So we're just going to have this conversation. In this video, we're going to talk about the reasons why our homemade clothes could suck. The first thing is skipping out the planning process. Even I do this and I need to take correction. Okay, thing is, when you leave out the things like um, organizing the resources that are going to be required for making a garment, you know, the lining, the right weight and the right type of interfacing, lengths of zippers or types of zippers, colors, all those things, even, dare I say it, the wrong fabric type, you know, type of fabric or weight of fabric, that could lead to a garment that ends up not looking the way you want it to look. I've made that mistake so many times where I'm like, yeah, I think, yeah, this type of fabric would be fine for the, re the recommendations, at the back of a sewing pattern. I'm like, yeah, 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 I'll use it. And I make the garments and it just doesn't look right. So many garments I've made in the past have ended up being just house clothes because I can't wear them out. I know. Another thing is leaving out prepping the fabric. Things like pre-washing, pre-shrinking, even ironing out the fabric before cutting it. Thing is, when you don't iron out a piece of fabric before you cut it, you are, in one way or the other, adding on to the fabric because of the creases that are already underneath the sewing pattern that you're about to cut out. And it just, it also distorts the, the um, grain. So what I have to say is just give that fabric a press. Take that extra minute or two to press out or steam press that fabric, you know, following the right guide and the right um, temperature that is required for pressing out the type of fabric. And you would end up with a much better looking and fitting garment. Now, you've planned out your project, you've given it all the prepping that it needs, but then you start cutting and making your garments and you choose the wrong type of scissors. Okay, so I've learned my lesson. I, for example, used big fabric cutting scissors because it was the easiest thing that I could reach for. And I used it to snip a thread when I got to the end of a seam. <laughs> So guess what happened? Whilst I was cutting the thread, I was snipping the thread, this part of the scissors went ahead to cut into the, a major area of my garment. And that's the reason why I packed this dress um, in one of the boxes at the back there and just gave up on it. I, well, in the end now, I've brought it back. I'll tell you what I've done in the end, actually. I am, um, so this was where the damage happened. And this is a major part of the dress. Look at it. So that's the dress, that's the bodice, and that's like the front of the skirt. <laughs> so I snipped into there whilst I was trying to, I don't even remember which part of the garment I was trying to snip threads. So what I did was I, <laughs> when I finally decided to revisit this project, I patched this part of it and then on like I then um, unpicked the pocket and repositioned it to cover up the hole but I must say this would have been a complete garment for last year's summer and I just didn't get to wear it because choosing the wrong type of scissors in this scenario has led to a potentially sucky dress because okay you might not see it but I see it the pocket is not really where it's supposed to be because I the, it's supposed to be right by the side as close as possible to the side seam now it's positioned right in front of the dress which some people might not see as an issue but to me it's an issue but i still have to wear it because waste not right it's really important not to skip the fitting process it doesn't matter how little but it's so important when i say fitting i mean creating a mock-up of something you have a sewing pattern that has been created for thousands and thousands of women all over the world and we all as we know, women come in different shapes and sizes. So it's really important to take that extra bit of time, especially with the bodice, to make sure it fits the right way. So an advice that I would normally give students that I've worked with in the past, especially with my course that I have on Domestica, is to use um, you know, a scrap piece of fabric, old beddings, to just cut out the bodice in the size that you believe matches your body dimensions. When you cut it out, you'd you know, construct the main part of 
the garment wear it um, just to check that it fits the way you want it to fit and on that mock-up fabric or semi garment you'll be able to tell oh it's a bit tight or snug here let me loosen it a little bit or it might be a case of oh it's too loose i need to just like make it a bit tighter or a bit more fitted around these different areas or it's just too tight around the armhole and you just need to add one centimeter on both sides of the body so fitting is really important because when you've got a garment that's well fitted you would want to make it again and again when the mock-up fits and it looks right then the end product stands a higher chance of looking right when you create it and you won't have a garment that sucks i'm going to leave some links in the description box below of blog posts that i've used in the past ebooks that i have read that really do help with the fitting process and um, i've got a few sections in my upcoming book i am not a fitting expert yet i'm learning and i'm going to try my best to share my learning process when it comes to fitting because because, um, women come in different shapes and sizes I've learned my way of fitting myself but everyone's different as we know when I learn I'll share my learning progress and learning process with you please do not underestimate this next one sewing or creating a garment or a project or any type of craft at all when you're tired let me tell you something when you're really tired you can make mistakes that you would wonder, was it me? Did I actually do this? I have done a lot of sewing um, after work in the evenings or when the family's gone upstairs and I know that I've spent most of the day really busy and instead of spending my winding down time, really winding down, I go straight in to a project that requires me to be very, very alert. So what I would recommend is <laughs> if you know that you're going to need your full attention and energy, high energy in a project please um don't do it when you're tired <laughs> because um well if you watched my video where i made jeans actually a lot of my sewing journey videos here on youtube have um i try to make it as realistic as possible and share the highs and the lows and a lot of the lows have been as a result of me being tired so when you make clothes when you're tired you are going to create clothes that potentially would suck so this one might come as a no-brainer to a lot of people but Believe me, a lot of people do it. And I'm not judging, I'm not judging. But it can be argued that not finishing the raw edges of a garment could lead to a garment that sucks. Yeah, I said it because um, potentially you would wash your garments, right, won't you? And the garment, depending on the type of fabric it is, would fray, right, with lots and lots of washes. And when, when they fray, those threads start to show like for example the hem um or from you know think about it if i if i didn't like finish the inside of this and i probably like pulled up my sleeves and i had to do something in public i don't i just don't think well it depends everyone's different right but i think it'll just look oh it won't look right i won't look it won't look finished it won't look polished and i just think that um fin just taking that extra time to finish off the raw edges raw all edges remember not like selvages if you like to use a selvage of a fabric taking that extra time to finish it just adds to the look of your finished garments um, there are different ways of finishing off um, the raw edges of fabrics when you're making a garment and I would say you know look into that overlockers are an example some people just prefer to use bias binding or bias tape some people prefer to um, do a zigzag um, at, at the edge of the fabric um, there are different ways using pinking shares i got these pinking shares and um, from ikea in my early day of sewing i don't know if this would still be available in ikea but i just really have found pinking when i haven't got the energy to set up my overlocker and when i'm sewing something that isn't prone to fraying that much and um, i find my pinking shears do the job as well so just spend that extra time finishing off the raw edges of your garment the next reason is skipping the finishes those extra little finishes forget about overlocking and raw edges and all of that i mean things like adding proper interfaced facings and just like turning up the neck the neckline so the neckline yeah or things like turning up just the armhole just turning it under 
turning under the armhole and um, rather than using bias tape to finish it or you know the facings that have been included in the sewing pattern those little extra finishes just elevate your garments they elevate the look and it just makes it look very well made right i must also add that under stitching really does add on to the finish of something like a neckline um, or the armhole those parts that would probably have the internal or hidden parts of a garment peek out it's really important not to underestimate under stitching and all the other little finishes that you would normally give to a garment there was a time when I used to wear garments that were made by seamstresses, dressmakers. Something that really put me off um, from those garments or from some of those garments were garments that had threads hanging here and there. It really, it just not, it's not a good look. So please do not skip trimming threads as you sew so there won't be any thread that you would miss out um, taking that extra time to hide overlocking threads you know the threads that you know dangle after overlocking and you don't want to trim all the way to the very edge of the overlocking threads just taking that extra minute to you know to um, pass it through a needle and well a wide eye needle and you know tucking it into the overlocking stitches I try to always have my trimming scissors or snipping scissors right next to me at all times i actually have like two or three hanging around just in case give them a good trim and you're good to go it's really important to mark notches avoiding marking notches could lead to poorly created aspects or parts of a garment when those parts of garments are not put together at the right place it could lead to a garment that kind of sits out of shape notches those marks where and um, you know this goes here these two go together try not to avoid it please don't leave ironing till the very last just have a, have your iron right next to you have a little ironing board or ironing mats to go right next to you table wherever you work from and just press as you go i actually need to fix my ironing mat cover because it looks a bit manky and that's the next video that's going to be coming up soon on the channel